It seems that African Americans have all but disappeared from primetime network television. There are no major network primetime shows that feature an all or predominantly African American cast. The last time I checked, when she wanted something badly. Of the shows that may have one or two black cast members, the roles are limited to a few categories. Surprisingly, there were quite a few shows that featured African Americans in the 50s and the 60s. Although the roles for the characters were stereotypical, they still had a presence on television. That's Saturn, a fur Saturn. Oh. Yeah, Andy, I'm very happy to see that I is in the fur business. This is kind of sudden, ain't it? Oh, no, Andy, a year from now, I'll be celebrating my first anniversary. Yeah, time sure do pass, don't it? <laughs> Where's all these furs you selling? Well, now, Andy, our first-class selling like this don't uh, put the furs on display. We bring them out one at a time from the back. When uh, I was growing up, yeah, Andy, um, and I'll show you our display. I was uh, born in the late 40s, so I watched a lot of television as a child in the 50s and into the 60s, and, of course, have continued to be a consumer of television. But I do recall when we got our first television set, um, you would see representation of African Americans on television most of the time in the variety shows that were uh, on during prime time. For example, uh, Eddie Cantor had a television show in the early 50s, and I did not watch it at that time. I was a little young, but I have since read about his show, but I do also recall when Steve Allen, for the couple of years that he was the host of The Tonight Show, even Ed Sullivan, I think, was a, for want of a better term, a champion of having African Americans on his variety show. Uh, there were also uh, television shows such, such as Beulah, which was a show about a black maid. Uh, we didn't watch that too often in our house, but I did see it from time to time. Of course, at the same time, there was a show about a white maid, and that show was Hazel. But you would see African Americans on different television shows, particularly situation comedies, in the background. You know, they would be uh, laborers, they would be maids, very seldom during that time, other than uh, if they were actors or musicians, would you see anyone portrayed as a professional? Hi. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello. Doesn't need much, just a little around the toe. There. <laughs> yes, sir. There you are, Mr. Benny. How do you like it so far? A 1977 study done by the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights said that depictions of minorities were both infrequent and stereotypical. The study also reported that such portrayals of African Americans as well as other ethnic minorities influenced the way in which both whites and non-whites perceived minorities. In 1971, 6% of the characters in dramas and comedies were African American, yet they made up 11% of the population. In 1980, African Americans represented 8% of the primetime characters and 12% of the U.S. population. By 1993, the total rose to 11% of primetime characters. It would seem that African Americans have finally attained representation reflective of society. These growth in numbers could be attributed to African Americans joining the middle class and advertisers' efforts to capitalize on the new crop of consumers. Whatever the reason, with shows like Sanford and Son that ran from 1972 to 1977 on NBC, ABC's What's Happening, which ran from 1976 to 1979, and The Jeffersons, which ran from 1975 to 1985 on CBS. African Americans were moving on up in ratings and in popular culture. In 1984, African Americans appeared to have finally shaken off the stereotypes of the past. When Dr. Heathcliff Huxtable and his wife, attorney Claire Hanks Huxtable, raised their family in the living rooms of America from their upper middle class brownstone in New York. The Cosby Show ran on NBC from 1984 to 1992. It was the first television show that featured a predominantly black cast and portrayed them as upper middle class. This was a groundbreaking show, and for what may have been the first time, African Americans saw themselves as being viable 
and having alternatives as opposed to conforming to stereotypes of the past. The Cosby Show paved the way for other shows like Living Single that ran on Fox from 1993 to 1998 and Family Matters that started on ABC in 1989 and ran until 1997 before moving to CBS from 1997 to 1998. Unfortunately, this new trend in primetime television did not last. When you look at the uh, current lineup of network primetime shows, you really still do not see African Americans as main characters, as the lead actor or the lead actress in a drama. I don't really watch sitcoms, so I can't, I can't speak much to sitcoms. Uh, although you can look at shows like Friends back in, in the 90s and some of the other popular ones and you know where, where were the black characters as part of the ensemble cast. They just weren't there. But coming back to current prime time, uh, one that I think about, I've only seen one show, and that is Scandal with Carrie if Washington. Is about to she break, plays a great character. But, I mean, she crisis management, is gonna get that is, that's a pressure cooker uh, type of environment. You have to be, you know, high performing, have your act together. She's a great character, and she's an excellent actress. Why do they have to have her having an affair with the President of the United States? Why? Is it just to add conflict to the character? I think they could have done that perhaps in a different way. Why, why did they have to have this happen? I, frankly, I think it demeans her character. In the ever-changing landscape of the American population, networks will have to recognize its many cultures and diverse citizenship and create programming accordingly. As the ethnic makeup of the country becomes more diverse, the entertainment industry must evolve, and only by portraying all people fairly, equally, and accurately, we will begin to see true equality in media and society. <laughs>